This is Duke University. And so what I've done is called this talk Reforming Architecture, which as titles go might be a little loaded with overly divergent meanings. Arguably, architecture is in need of a variety of reforms, environmental, pedagogical, and the list goes on, but this talk isn't about that. Instead, it's mostly about the part drawing plays in architecture. And as odd as it may seem, it's really no small task to talk about this relationship, in part because for many architects, the line where drawing stops and architecture begins is very fuzzy. So one of the things that I've tried to do is give a little definition to this borderline, to at least sketch out its form, which aligns my efforts rather nicely with the kinds of questions being asked this year at the Franklin Center. Because one way to understand my inquiry into architectural drawing is to see that I'm really trying to clean up some of the mischief architecture has had with the term form. On the one hand, architecture is a practice of materialized things and their shapes, while on the other, it's a practice of ideas. The term form, of course, applies to both of these categories, and architects have certainly exploited this ambiguity. In fact, it's arguable that much of what we understand as an architectural poetic is made up of exactly those instances when both meanings of form most strongly coexist. Rudy Arnheim had a similar idea when he wrote that, quote, for an object to be perceived as pure form, it had to dematerialize into the power of its forceful symbolism. I would argue that until recently, the tool which allowed architects to encourage such slippage was drawing. As the medium of architectural design, drawing reifies the duality of form. But to be clear, at this point, I must establish that I'm not talking about all kinds of drawing. One of the ways I've succeeded at removing some of drawing's fuzziness is to parse out the variety of drawing's uses in architecture and to focus my thinking on the most conventionalized types those that were refined and put into place by the earliest architects of the Renaissance. In short, rather than looking at drawing to core, I studied this, the combined use of plan, section, and elevation. This triad of images is the bread and butter of architectural thought. Together, plan, section, and elevation make up what I call the conceptual medium of architectural design. It is a medium of ideation and representation, it formulates the mental schema of the architect, although some would insist that it merely externalizes this, and it represents those thoughts as a set of buildable instructions. How drawing was developed to fulfill these tasks, how these tasks became the purview of architecture, and how drawing is coming up short for today's architectural contemplations is the subject of today's talk. But you may ask, why is it that drawing matters so much? I think the best explanation I can offer is a personal one. Trained in architectural design, the first time I realized how drawing structured my thinking was when I confronted buildings like this one. And the question that occurred to me as I got to know buildings like this was how? How does one build like this? And more importantly, how does one think like this? Because one thing I knew was that when I picked up a pencil and stared at the blankness of a page, the ways and hows of my thinking simply would not, and no matter how hard I tried, could not bring me to something like this. The problem was quite simple, really. The reason I couldn't comprehend the hows of a building like Bourges here was because such buildings were not designed under the influence of drawing the way mine were. It wasn't just that the designers of the time used different theories or shapes, but that their methods of design had them thinking differently than mine did. They worked with a different process and a different conceptual medium. Such statements would be easy to accept if Gothic masons didn't draw at all, but of course it isn't that simple. As it turns out, they did draw, but how their drawing techniques related to their conceptualization of design still remains fairly mysterious. In short, they drew, but drawing wasn't their design medium, and interestingly, the result is that their drawings are simultaneously both recognizable and alien to us. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.